Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to worship at Detroit Lakes United Methodist Church, where we have been worshiping virtually for some time now. In the near future, we are going to have a blended service where there will be aspects of the Wednesday evening service that you have long attended and our Sunday morning two worship services. Today, we are gathered in uh, the fellowship room uh, called Journeyland, and um, I hope that that brings a smile to any from the first service. It's a beautiful room to worship in. We have great thanks um, to share with those who have participated in these services, and they include Nick, who is our production uh, person, uh, also Beth, who is part of our Wednesday night guitar and music group, Diane, who is our choir director, and she has facilitated greatly by coordinating music for all of the services. We give you thanks to all of you. Now, in the weeks ahead, we are going to be doing an interactive prayer as part of our services. Tonight, Pastor Gary is using the symbol of an umbrella. Next week, I'm asking that you have some buttons in your worship area, or at least wear a button-down shirt of some sort. A cell phone and Legos will provide the focus for our interactive prayer in the weeks ahead. Our announcements are shared after the sermon, as well as our prayer, joys, and concerns. So, with that, let us worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Would you pray with me? Break through, O Lord, any darkness and fears that we may have. Let the light of your salvation and hope shine on your people, through us and in us, that healing and hope may abound in your world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, it is a delight to have some special music. Thine be the glory, risen conquering sun. Endless is the victory, thou o'er death has won. Angels in the bright thren, roll the stone away. Get the folded grave clothes where the body Thine be the glory, risen conquering sun. Endless is the victory, thou or death has won. Lo, Jesus meets thee, risen from the
Rick Peckman, Ministry Coordinator at Detroit Lakes United Methodist Church. Pastor Gary is going to be talking about doubt, and that made me think of this book that has been recommended to me, The Wall in the Middle of the Book. The knight in this story has a little bit of doubt what's on the other side of the wall. Please listen and enjoy. Look closely at the pictures, they're awesome. It starts out, the wall in the middle of the book is supposed to protect one side of the book from the other. Well, let's take a look. Here's the wall. By John Eggie. There's a wall in the middle of the book. And it's a good thing. Oh, it looks like he has to fix the wall. Ooh. The wall protects this side of the book from the other side of the book. This side of the book is safe. Take a look at what's happening though. Ooh, careful, you guys. The other side is not. But the most dangerous thing on the other side of the book is an ogre. Do you want to see him? Look here. If the ogre caught me, He'd eat me up. That's why I'm glad there's a wall in the, the, in the middle of the book and that I'm on this side of it. Hmm. Well, well, wait, wait a second. W what's going on? This is not supposed to happen on this side of the wall. Uh oh, look you guys. Careful, ogre. Oh, oh wow. Well, thank you. Oh no, I'm on the other side of the book. And you're an ogre who is going to eat me up. Oh. Ha ha ha. I'm actually a nice ogre. And this side of the book is fantastic. Come on, I'll show you around. Do you notice what was happening on this side of the book? Good thing he's not there. Hmm? <laughs> hey, ogre, wait for me. Oh man, look at all the fun they're having. The wall in the middle of the book. Sometimes we have doubts, but you know what? Things turn out okay. Blessings. Our Bible lesson for today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, beginning with verse 19. Hear these words as I read them to you. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, 
receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who is called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Here ends the reading from God's holy word. Would you pray with me, please? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of the hearts of each of these, your people, be found acceptable in your sight, O Lord our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. In John Irving's novel, A Prayer for Owen Meany, the narrator named John discusses the meaning of faith with his friend Owen. In one scene at the schoolyard as twilight falls, Owen points to a gray granite statue of Mary Magdalene. When darkness makes it impossible to see the statue, Owen asks John if he knows whether the statue is still there. John says, of course he knows that. Owen keeps pushing. You have no doubt she's there, Owen nagged at me. Of course I have no doubt, I said. But you can't see her. You could be wrong, he said. No, I'm not wrong. She's there. I know she's there, I yelled at him. You absolutely know she's there, even though you can't see her, he asked me. Yes, I screamed. Well, now you know how I feel about God, said Owen Meany. I can't see him, but I absolutely know he is there. Owen's faith is the kind of belief in the risen Jesus that the gospel writer John celebrated in our Bible lesson. Owen believes so completely in God that he is willing to stake his life on that conviction. He does not need to see. He believes and orients his life, his whole life, around this belief. Thomas doubted that Jesus was alive again, that Jesus was seen by Mary and the other disciples. And Thomas said, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. So through the ages, rightly or wrongly, Thomas has been known as Doubting Thomas. Your question For today is this, where are you on the doubting or believing scale when it comes to the risen Jesus? Well, maybe we should define belief and doubt first. When John used the word translated as believe in our English translations, he did not mean something that we have an opinion about. Belief is is not just thinking something is true. 
Instead, to believe means to trust, to be loyal to, to bond with. Think of how Jesus talked about, I am the vine and you are the branches. That is belief. John Patton was a 19th century Scottish missionary who preached to the people of the New Hebrides Islands and sought to translate the Bible into their languages. However, in in one New Hebrides language, he could find no word meaning to believe. So how could he translate the New Testament if he did not have a word for believing? One day, an exhausted islander friend came into his home, sat down on a chair, put his feet up on another chair, and sighed. He said how great it felt to be able to lean his whole weight on those two chairs. Patton knew then that he had found the word he needed. Belief in its biblical sense means leaning our whole weight on God, surrendering ourselves to God's strength. Belief is not so much an act of truth as it is an act of trust. A man talked about what his personal faith meant to him. And he recalled walking as a small boy with his father one day, having to reach up to hold on to his father's hand. After a while, he said, I can't hold on anymore. You have to hold on to me for a while. And he remembered the moment when he felt his father's hand take over. That, he said, was the way that it felt to have faith in God. It is difficult to come to a point of complete belief of complete and sustained trust like that. We doubt, though doubt is not the same thing as unbelief. There is a difference between a doubter and an unbeliever. A doubter still searches for God and desires to live a godly life. An unbeliever does not search for God, focusing focusing instead on securing pleasure. A doubter has a thousand questions about God and the sacred, questions about God's existence, the divinity of Christ, the presence of God in the world. An unbeliever doesn't bother with those questions. A doubter struggles with God and struggles to live a godly life. An unbeliever simply struggles to pay the bills find a life partner, find a job, find a house. That's it. All Christians doubt, some more than others. All Christians have questions about God, about Jesus, about the nature of the holy, even if some only ask those questions in their minds and in their hearts. A doubter is not an unbeliever. A doubter is actually someone on their way to becoming a believer. Many of us are both doubter and believer in the ways Thomas was. We struggle with our faith, and we want to know the reality of God's love in our lives. We want to know that reality of God's love when we're laid off from work when our application is rejected, when we're faced with a difficult illness, when we struggle with family problems, when we're burdened with the sheer boredom of life, when we're caught in a financial crisis, when our spiritual well runs dry, when we have no emotional strength, when we simply have nothing left to give. At those times, like Thomas, we desire something, anything, 
showing us that God is truly present and alive in our lives. The key to finding a resurrection faith is found in living the kind of life Jesus modeled and called us to. We begin to believe as we obey Jesus' teachings. Back in the Dust Bowl days, in one county badly stricken by drought, the fields were parched brown from lack of rain. The crops wilted. People became anxious, irritable, near despair, searching the sky for any sign of relief. Days turned into arid weeks, and yet no rain came. The clergy of the local churches called for an hour of prayer on the town square on the upcoming Saturday. And they asked everyone to come and to, to bring with them some object of faith that meant something to them for inspiration. At high noon on Saturday, the townspeople turned out, filling the square with anxious faces and hopeful hearts. The pastors noted the variety of objects clutched in prayerful hands. Bibles, prayer books, crosses, rosaries. When the hour of prayer ended, as by providence, a soft rain began to fall. Cheers swept the crowd as they held their treasured objects up high in gratitude and praise to God. From the middle of the crowd, one faith symbol seemed to overshadow them all. One small nine-year-old child had brought an umbrella. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. <laughs> Truth is harder than a lie And dark seems safer than the light Everyone has a heart that loves to hide I'm a mess and so are you We build walls nobody can get through it may be hard, but the best thing we could ever do, ever do, bring your brokenness and I'll bring mine, cause love can heal what hurt divides, and mercy's waiting on the other side, if we're on Pretend to be something that you're not Living life afraid of getting caught There is freedom found When we lay our secrets down At the cross, at the cross Bring your brokenness and I'll bring mine Cause love can heal what hurt divides And burn If we're honest, if we're honest, it'll change our lives, it'll set us free, it's what we need to be, bring your bro. Uh-huh.
aside If we're honest If we're honest If we're honest During the message he just heard a small child had brought an object of faith with her as she sought to pray for rain to come upon her, her town and her area. For our prayer time, don't have to think about an umbrella, although that was that one child's object or emblem of faith. But for you, what is an emblem or a symbol of faith? Something that you might grab hold of and that helps you remind, to remind you that, that God is faithful. And that even though things are hard right now, particularly with the pandemic and all the troubles that it has brought with it, what can you hold on to to help you remember that God is holding on to you. Think about what object you would have and sometime today bring that object out and hold it and pray knowing that God hears you. I've been washed in the rain.
Let us pray together, and as we have time, we will have silence in the middle of the prayer, and finally, the Lord's Prayer. Would you join with me? O Lord, in these times when we have fear of losing hope or feel that our efforts might be futile, let us see in our hearts and minds the image of your resurrection, and let that be our source of courage and strength. Help us to face challenges and struggles which have affected so many in our world with their health, their need for face-to-face community. We pray for those who struggle through no fault of their own with decreased finances and increased needs. We pray for those who grieve. For in this community, along with others, we have lost loved ones who died without family at their side for our needs, for our concerns. Hear us in the silence now, we pray. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever. Amen. Please turn to your journey notes in this week and in the weeks to come. Lisa spends a lot of time on them, and they are the best update as to what is happening in our congregation. You will find their prayer concerns as well as announcements. Many thanks for keeping in touch. And if you would like to give an offering, we invite you to do so in a number of different ways. The first is, of course, you can send your check in an envelope to the church office. And the mail is checked daily, and we'll be happy to receive that gift. Also, if you would like to give electronically, you may do so on a regular basis. The information as to how uh, to begin your electronic gift is to be found on our website. But if you have difficulty with that, please contact the church office. One other way that you can give is to give to one another. During these days, it is very important that we stay in touch, that we reach out. We don't have to have social distancing. We need physical distancing. And with physical distancing, we can be very, very close. If you know of someone who is in the hospital or has had a a difficult moment, someone who may have encountered grief or illness or death, please be in touch with us. You may do so by calling the church office and that information will come to Gary and I, or to the proper staff member. With those things, um, we are going to enjoy our, another piece of music. Yeah. 
is ringing and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his home and the drum Go forth in hope. Go forth in joy. Go forth knowing that God is always there to sustain us. And may the peace and grace of Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.